So some of the questions you might be given uh, to evaluate or to simplify or to calculate the sum to infinity. Uh, this is a condition that we are going to have under a geometric. So definitely we are dealing with a geometric series as the series converges. As the series converges, we are going to notice that, all right, let's just have this one. Like I said, as the series uh, converges. This is what we are going to notice. The sum to infinity can be calculated on a condition that R is greater than negative one, but less than one. In this interval, the sum to infinity can be calculated with the formula that is A over one minus R. So if we are to say the sum to infinity, the moment we are given infinite like this, you know that the formula that you're supposed to use. So sometimes they might not uh, ask you to evaluate like this. Here they have already specified it. They can just say evaluate. You can, might be given a question like this. Uh, to evaluate, you're not even given this. The question is just evaluate, then they give you this. You are supposed to know what you're working with. These terms, they start from one. Where are they going to end? We do not have an ending point. It's infinite. Once you see this ending point, you know that you're dealing with what? Sum to infinite. Because they can ask you like that. Just evaluate. Here yeah, they've already specified, calculate the sum to infinity, which is an advantage for you to understand that you already know that it's a geometric. Uh, the first term can be determined by substituting. Remember what I was talking about uh, to say the first term, when P is equal to one, we're gonna substitute T one. We substitute in place of P, we substitute a one. So that's eight uh, into four to the exponent of one minus one. All right, so that was going to give us uh, eight. We do the same thing for T2. When this is a two, you substitute a two, that's eight into four to the exponent of one minus two, which was going to give us a two uh, and so on. But since guys, we are dealing with sum to infinity, there's no way that you're gonna have sum to infinity on an arithmetic. So having these two terms, it's enough. You divide T2 divided by T1, you have what? Your common ratio. But just for this, in place of this P minus three, just use your calculator that was going to give you uh, one over two. So this is what you're going to have, guys. And as you can see, definitely we'll be thinking of the common ratio. There's nothing about common difference in this one. The common ratio, T2 divided by T1, eight. And that was going to give us, that is one, also one over four. So as you can see, guys, we have our A, the first term. We also have our common ratio. So the sum to infinity can be calculated. If we consider the previous uh, case, because I talked about this in our previous class when I was saying a summation, we can tell when this summation is given, we can tell that truly it's a geometric. And also on that geometric, you can even tell the first term and also the common ratio. So here we see that the first term is eight, which is exactly the first term that we have, which is eight. But why is it that the common ratio is one over four, not a four? If someone might ask to say, okay, do you explain that? We can use the, we can relate from the formula. Why is it that this time they are different? Okay, very true. I said we can relate from the formula, all right? It's supposed to be written in the form of A, R to the exponent of N minus one. This is one minus P. And this is not supposed to be one minus, it's N minus one. Not to start with one. So we have to reverse this so that it must be written as P minus one. That is, we are supposed, in this way, so here, it is not in that same manner. That is why you see it is not uh, that what we expect. So rewriting in this manner so that we have got N minus one, P minus one, what are we supposed to do? So what are we going to do so that we have this as a positive P? We factor out that negative. So we're going to factor out the negative on P. If we factor out the negative on P, it's negative divided by negative, which is positive P. One divided by negative, which is negative one. Guys, as we can see, we have this concept of N minus one. But still, there is a negative here, which is not on our formula. There is no negative here. So we have to get rid of that negative. 
Remember to the exponent of a negative simply means one over that digit. So it's four to the exponent of a negative. It means one over four to the exponent of a negative. So that's one over four to the exponent of what? P minus one. Reading it in this manner, we can relate from our TN. Now it is exactly in the same manner of our TN, the one I was explaining of AR to the exponent of N minus one. This is P minus one, N minus one, not one minus P. If you take it this way, yes, we are going to agree uh, with each other that your A is going to be eight in that man, one over four. So that one is going to be one over four, which is exactly the same way that we had when we are writing our terms. Use this way, why are you going to use this way? So either way, you have your A and you have your R there. So the sum of uh, the sum to infinity can now be calculated, all right? So let's determine our sum to infinity. As I had this formula, therefore, our sum to infinity is going to be A, which is our T1, the first term, which is 8 over what? 1 minus R. Remember, our R is the common ratio, which is 1 over 4. So that is going to be uh, 1 minus 1 over 4 like this. All right, to obtain uh, the sum to infinity as 32 uh, over 3 which is same as 10 and two thirds, okay? So you have to be very careful in your simplification. What exactly uh, are you given? How from there? In this case, we are given again another one. For which values of X? For which values of X will this part, whole part here, exist? Meaning to say it's an interval for the values of X. From where? In the, in, they're ending up to infinity. They do not end, infinite. So what is it that we understand about the sum to infinity? Yes, we talked about the formula, but what is it the condition? The is greater than negative one, but less than one. These are the, this is where, when we can actually apply this sum to infinity, it exists in within this interval. So what is our error? That is the, the question. All right, guys, we can tell our error is simply this part here that we are seeing here. Uh, if you do not understand, uh, we can have our terms, remember, T1, you substitute in place of K, uh, K when it is one, exponent of one, which is just one like that. Uh, T2, you substitute at two in place of K, on and so on. For X, we divide these two. 4X minus one uh, to the exponent of two over 4X minus one to the exponent of one, this one. Remember, same basis. You subtract the exponents. It was uh, simply going to be uh, 4X minus one. You do the same thing, this one and this one, T3 over T2. You subtract three minus two is just, just going to be one case. That is your common ratio, this one. Your R is there. You can even tell, like I said, it's already there. So if you know this is my R in terms of X, substitute that now here for the interval that we are given so that we can tell for which values of X. We're talking of X then. So this is R and uh, just going to substitute for X minus one less than one like this. We substituted here. R. So let's solve for 10 mathematics when you're solving uh, compound inequalities, all right? We can take uh, the negative one to the other side. It becomes a positive one. We take it here. It becomes a positive one also. The moment it jumps that, it changes the sign. So let's add minus one plus one. That's a zero, all right? So you're going to remain with 4x. Remember, we removed this minus one. Uh, that's less than uh, one plus one. That's a two. So you take it both sides, this side and also this side. There is a four. So how do you remove this four? You divide by it. So the moment you divide by four, you have to divide by four. You have to divide by four. So that is uh, this and this is going to cancel. So X is greater than uh, two divided by four, which is one over two. So this is the interval for which the X values must for this to be true for us to work with the sum to infinity. The variable X must be greater than zero, but less than uh, one over two. So this is how your sum to infinity can be used in relationship with the summation. If you're dealing with the summation, uh, you, but it can be taken from there. You can see it when there is an infinity there. They're simply referring to the sum of uh, the sum to infinity. So that's it, guys. We shall see in our next, uh, next classes that is working with question papers uh, so that we can see how do they actually ask these questions on our number patterns, considering the sequences, uh, the series, how questions can be given so that we can practice uh, preparing ourselves for the exams which are ahead of time.